All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. We are joined by Kurt Busch, 2004 NASCAR Cup Series champion and 2017 Daytona 500 champion, and Steve Weintraub, Chief Strategy Officer with Vettix for a special announcement today. Uh, Steve, if you'd like to uh, get things started off. Great, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. And yeah, I'm, I'm in the shadow of greatness here. So I, I'm just the Chief Strategy Officer for Vettix. Um, we're here today because Vettix and NASCAR Cup Series champion Kurt Busch, uh, we want to announce a partnership that we're doing for Kurt's appreciation for the military and veteran community. And we, we've done things in the past, so in essence, we're putting the band back together. Um, and therefore, in, in collaboration with, with NASCAR and Speedway Motorsports tracks, Kurt uh, is going to actively amplify uh, what Vettix does, the mission, uh, throughout the season with appearances, trackside, different activations to really um, you know, amplify the mission of what Vettix does and, and to get more people known about our mission and with, with Kurt's appreciation for the military and all the great things that he's done for our veterans and service members throughout his career. Uh, this is just a great way to, uh, again, work with Kurt. And we're, we're so fortunate that uh, the, the champion is, is going to be uh, doing this. Absolutely. No, it, uh, thanks again, Steve. I appreciate this. Uh, we went uh, about five years ago. And, um, you know, during that time, we went through COVID. And we've had different uh, situations or hurdles or obstacles to overcome, but now it's simple, it's clean, it's easy. And uh, with vettix.org, all of our military will have access to 100 tickets to every race. Uh, I'd like to thank the tracks, NASCAR, uh, SMI, uh, for everyone to chip in and make this program a success. And what makes it so seamless is that it's, it's very easy through vettix.org. Uh, for our military past, present, and future uh, to get tickets to our races. And so just different uh, teamwork all the way around. And um, the main motivation for me, though, was uh, my trips to Walter Reed, uh, Bethesda Medical Center, uh, the different hospitals around the country or the different bases. Uh, I've always been inspired by the commitment of our armed forces and, and our military and the sacrifices they make. And it really hit home uh, a few times to me. And when I'm having a bad day at the track, it's like, you know, it's, it's not nothing, nothing compared to um, or anything close compared to what they go through. And so it's just a nice way for uh, more people to come to our racetracks, uh, for our military to bring their families and to enjoy our NASCAR environment. And so thanks again to, to all the tracks. And this is something that um, I'm hopeful that we'll have the fan engagement as we get further down the road uh, where fans can donate as well on top of these tickets. Uh, sponsors, uh, the tracks again. And then even um, one of the other things we did just before COVID was other drivers uh, in the communities that they're from, you know, like Brad Keselowski in the Michigan area or Alex Bowman in the Phoenix area, you know, Chase Elliott in, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia and, and, and that racetrack. Those were things that were starting to, to move forward. And now uh, I think we've got a good train leaving the station to make sure that all of our military have access. So thanks again. Appreciate the time. Excellent. And we'll uh, get things started off with a quick question for you, Kurt. Um, you've obviously been involved with Vettix for a good long while now. Uh, you mentioned the fan engagement component. Are there any particular moments that have uh, been meaningful to you in, in your partnership with Vettix thus far? What's been amazing is that uh, you know, in the garage area, you'll see uh, somebody with a sign that says, thank you, Vettix. And they're, they're pointing it at me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, I just got you tickets to the grandstands. How'd you get in the garage area? And that's where they use and parlay their connections uh, to you know, build upon the ticket that's available. And then they turn it into a pit pass and then a full on experience. And so just really neat to, to see you know, the, the creative side of what you give one person a ticket and then what do they want to do with it. So that's, that's been the best reward with it. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we'll open it up to questions. Yep. Jerry. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires tonight. A couple, I guess. Uh, just, can you talk about the evolution of this program and how you know the, the experiences that, that you both have when you're you're, you're meeting with these military uh, members and and their families and, and making sure that you know they, as you say, give them a ticket and what they do with it. They you know, they, they expand on from there. But what is what has that evolution been like for over the past four or five years? And and how is it? And where do you see it even even going further? 
Uh, the, the way that I, I see it, it's the layers. Uh, it's just like any time uh, a new person or a family comes to a race, uh, they tell their friends, they tell their group of people. And so that one person turns into 10, those 10 turn into 100, and it's just more word of mouth uh, that continues to spread. And their experience at NASCAR uh, and how Vet Ticks made it possible. And then with them, it, it, it doesn't even have to be a military person that they're talking to. Then you end up with more families coming to our racetracks. Yeah, and on the Vet Ticks side, we're a nonprofit, we're a charity, and our motto is give something to those who gave. So we have service members, veterans, first responders that maybe they're, they're current, maybe they're former, they're veterans, and they, they miss time away from their family and friends, uh, sacrifices missed anniversaries, childbirths, things like that. So when we can send them to these events, to these NASCAR races, to, to make memories, rebuild these experiences, build these bonds with their families and their friends that they missed out on, that's the, the essence of what our mission is. And with Kurt's help and, and the, the tracks, we're, we're growing more and more fans and getting them to the stands to make these memories, to create memories that are going to last a lifetime. Thank you. And, and Kurt, for you, uh, I think you gave yourself like the chief ambassador of fun title at one point or whatever. I forget the exact title, but I'm, I'm going through. We've seen you do Barrett Jackson. We've seen you do uh, uh, some college hoop stuff. We saw the RFK poker. What is life like for Kurt Busch right now and, uh, and for, for the fans out there that are wondering uh, what's going on? I was living a good retirement life, uh, yeah, but still with um, everything going on, my life feel, feels the same. Uh, it's just that I just don't put the helmet on and, and go race on Sundays. Uh, still doing uh, work with Monster Energy, uh, being a brand ambassador with them and different parties, different fun, uh, and then different corporate things as well, behind the scenes with our wholesalers and our distributors. Uh, fun events with Toyota, uh, different uh, you know activations with, um, hopefully I'll have the chance to maybe even go to Paris this summer to go with some of our Olympians that are sponsored with the Toyota program. Uh, but most importantly, uh, my job with 2311, uh, consulting with the team and helping Bubba, helping Tyler, uh, and just being one of the extra set of eyes and ears at the track and giving my perspective while I still have uh, some current data that, uh, that will coincide with, with what's going on. So I'm just having fun, uh, traveling a little bit. And uh, like Atlanta, there's no real reason for me to go. I might take that weekend off, but if we need to go to work and bring more <laughs> military guys and, and girls to the track, we'll do it. Uh, so I'm just kind of up and at it each and every week. And uh, there is an agenda, but there is no agenda. Over here. <clears throat> Steve Sorry to the Lasco Press. Guys, I just wanted to say thanks. My son currently serves. Um, he had an opportunity to uh, um, use some of your tickets a couple of years ago in Michigan. Took two of my grandkids, and they just had a blast. So I uh, appreciate what you do, and uh, I think it's a great program. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Make sure that he takes you and, and you, <laughs> you tell him that's in order. Uh, we've got two more questions over here. Kurt, just for you, uh, Michael McDowell was in here yesterday and couldn't help but stop and stare and look at his name on that trophy over there. And uh, I wonder if that ever gets old for a former winner of the Daytona 500 and your thoughts every time you come back here. No, it's, it's one of those, those pieces of art uh, that that's you know, so special with just the win, but yet the trophy is, is a piece of art. I think I'm on the lower bottom right, if, if I remember right. I know exactly where it is. It actually it says Kurt and doesn't say Kyle. So that's one thing I still have. That's one thing I still have up on him. Otherwise, he's got two championships and double the wins, but I got the uh, Harley JRL at home and he does not. Another question. Kenneth Bueno, Kaplan News at FIU. For, for both of you, first of all, I appreciate the addition to honoring and, of course, giving the veterans and even current members an experience of NASCAR that they probably won't forget. Uh, talk about how it adds to the NASCAR salutes sort of scene that's already been prominent in NASCAR, obviously the Coca-Cola 600, the way they honor and remember veterans and how they honor everyone that serves currently. Talk about how that adds it from both sides of the perspective from a former driver and, and now looking at it from the outside and from the Vetsix perspective too. Yeah, I, I believe our group uh, is the most patriotic sports group in, in, in the world. You know, with the way we see uh, different activations or different, uh, the, the, 
the pageantry before the race, uh, there's so much respect that you see from our NASCAR community. And you know whether it's the track bringing our uh, military in or it's uh, different sponsors, I think everybody puts their arm up as high as they can to help create more um, opportunities to give back and to show respect. And so I'm really proud of our group. And with Vet Ticks, that's what makes this so clean and simple is that it's uh, an easy app that they download and, and away they go. They get to, they don't have to worry about the box office or calling this connection or working with that person. It's just a, a seamless, easy access way to get to the track. So Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Kurt, I'm, I'm curious, in your time at, with 2311 with Denny, what have you, what, what have you kind of learned about him or seen or experienced about him that maybe you didn't know as much before? Because you guys weren't, if I remember right, weren't as, as close or new as each other as well. What have you kind of learned about him in your time there or something that's kind of surprised you about him? Obviously, he's got his hands in a lot of different things. Yeah, Denny is uh, definitely a, a, a powerful individual as a driver, but I see more of a, a powerful stance as an owner and the direction that he's taking 2311. Um, you know, it's not just done by Denny. There's, there's a ton of great people that he has surrounded himself with. Uh, I'm happy and, and, and glad that I have a small part in adding little things here or there. But the way that he operates, as a, now this is our fourth year, it's as if he, he knew what to do on year one or knew what to do on year two and three. And there's a nice process. Uh, when, when we're getting compliments from uh, teams like Stuart Haas saying that it took us eight years to win a race. And here we are you know, in our, into our fourth year with putting both guys in the playoffs, um, you know, wins at a variety of racetracks, you know, super speedway, road course, intermediate. Uh, we're, we're checking a lot of boxes at a nice rate. And it's, it's key to do that uh, because we have such quality partners uh, with Toyota, all of our top sponsors, and they, they want performance. But there's also this other guy named Michael Jordan that wants performance, and we all walk in that front door each and every day uh, to give our best because we know that he's one of the greatest in all of sports. Um, I certainly don't want to discount your fan base because certainly you have a fan base and certainly they were vocal, but obviously as, as somebody who received the other, the jeers as, as opposed to cheers at times, what do you think of like seeing what Denny's going through and, and the reaction of the crowd? And look, I, I've not been in your position or his position. I don't know what it's like to be booed. I don't know if I necessarily want to be that, but how somebody handles it and how you've seen how he's handled it and kind of play with it. And I think you tried to do it at times, play with the crowd as well. You know, it's, um, it's an element that uh, you, you don't know if you're ever gonna get thrusted into it or you don't know why uh, you ended up with that, that black hat on, so to speak. But the way that uh, he continues to perform, that's, that's what is really drawing the, the action. You know, it's not criticism, it's, it's not being a villain, it's not uh, being the hero. It's just the, the performance is what draws things like that to, to different drivers or to different athletes or to different performers and everywhere. And so he's, he's handled it in a unique way. I mean, he's an owner, a driver, he's got his podcast, he's a dad. You know, there's so many things that he's doing really well right now that um, I'm going to do whatever I can to support him, support our team and, and keep this train moving. We had a question from John. John Newby, NBC Sports. So I've talked to Eric Jones and other drivers in the past about this, but I kind of wanted your perspective, Kurt. I mean, why are you guys so, you know, heavily invested in, you know, charitable works, helping others, you know, because obviously, like, you are in a great place where you don't have to, but it seems everyone in NASCAR is so willing. Uh, it's, it's the inspiration uh, that, that I have felt over the years from our military. Um, there's also a, a nice spot for me to give back, you know, there I started from nothing as, as a blue collar kid out of Vegas. And, you know, I, I worked hard, put in the hours, put in the effort, 23 years behind the wheel. But now it's um, a nice way to give back and a nice way to make things come full circle because so many people helped me throughout all these years uh, to make it through and to continue to win. And so everybody has their own inspiration. And uh, it could be just one moment or it could be over time. 
Jacob. Jacob Zillman, Race Face Digital. Uh, Kurt, we, we know the driving side for you didn't end how you hoped it would, but has it been just as satisfying, in, maybe in a different way, to be a part, still be a part of 2311's success in the role that you are now and, and still being able to serve as that mentor for, for Tyler and Bubba? Absolutely. No, this is um, where I would have been at this time anyhow. And whether it just happened, you know, a year and a half sooner, that's fine. And yeah, this is uh, something that I knew I could do, um, you know, on my twilight years uh, and to give back with the experience that I have and, and to coach in certain little small ways. Uh, but ultimately now with, with the peak and the prime of Bubba and his time in the sport and, and with Tyler and with our race team, things are really matching up uh, to be a powerful group here in 2024 and, and years beyond. What's maybe, you know, from a little bit more internal perspective, something that's surprised you or really stuck out to you, particularly over this rise the last year that this team's been on? Um, I would say a couple of key moments have just been those random um, questions that come from an engineer or a mechanic on, hey, if you were driving, what would you do in this situation? And so it makes me feel proud to have the current information to give and to give a very genuine and descript definition to the question. And that's uh, it's rewarding for me when uh, those, those little nuggets pop up and I'm able to, to help steer the direction um, and, and match other, other people's ideas and other people's motives. All right. Any last questions for Kurt or Steve? No? All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that is. Thank you so much. Different from what you can see, Jerry. One second. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go. Appreciate it, sir.